We are live. We yes, are live. We are. The big thing here at the BKFC studios here live from Satellite 5 is that Rob likes to make me laugh before we go on, or I make him laugh, or I hear stuff in my headphones. It's really funny. A lot of fun stuff going on here today. I'm glad you can be a part of it. We appreciate you being here. Going to get into all kinds of stuff. Uh, MMA, excuse me, I'm screwing up already. That's the way I do shows. I need more tiger <laughs> life in me. Uh, Mayweather versus Jake Paul this weekend. We're very excited about that. We've been talking about that to see what happens. We're going to go through a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. There's also a BKFC fighter against Chad Ochocinco on the undercard. And we're going to talk about who that is and find out more about that. Bare Knuckle MMA. Yeah, it's coming to the BK TV app. Bare yeah. Knuckle. I, I'm excited for that. Me too, It's going to be awesome. And then, uh, uh, this is interesting, WWE, if you're a wrestling fan, are they on the way down? What's going on there? And there's some other stuff we're going to talk about. Bare Knuckle drama. relating to WWE. A lot of wrestling drama. Call your friends. Tell them. BKFC 18 card release. Also, a tryouts announcement, a new tryout coming up. So much more. It's all here for you, and we appreciate you being here. My man, Rob, I didn't even give you official introduction, so I'm going to do a little... Do we have a drum roll sound effect? I don't even know. We used to. Do we have one? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> like they're mad at me in the truck. Like, we got to pull this now. Here. There it is. There. Anyway, there, there it is. You go. Rob, this is how we work. There's your Rob's awesome. here. What's up, man? Good to see you. My face feels so light. Well, it looks light. <laughs> I, you know, you have baby fresh smooth skin. It looks like your beard yeah. fell off. I don't know where mm -hmm. it went. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm a heterosexual male. I'm, I'm married, but I want to kiss your face. It looks so smooth. <laughs> here we go. I mean, it does. This, this is how we start the show. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. So my son said that he wants to shave my beard. So I gave him the clippers. He went to town. How old is your son? Three. He just turned three. And he shaved, did he shave? You look, your eyebrows are still there. <laughs> no, we, he started, he grabbed the razor and started going up after my arms. I'm like, no, 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 buddy. He didn't do the whole thing himself. <laughs> no, no, no. He uh, he chopped it Is up. Is there no nice. pictures or video of this? I, there there are. Do, uh, I'm well, going to post Next week we'll have to show them where you'll post them? Yeah, well, All Actually, right. I'll send it maybe to the production truck. We can get it uh, at intermission. Well, we're here tomorrow. live at Satellite 5, so we can do anything we want, yeah, man. We've got man. a good production truck. So let's talk about some of the stuff that's trending in combat sports. Mm -hmm. and, and again, we welcome you all to the show. You're a big part of the show, uh, you know, if you're here. Uh, I know Rob can see the chat more Hold than on, I guys, can. real quick. I do have a picture of Rob. Oh, we have a picture of Rob. Oh, we do. boy. Oh, I want to see this. So this is your... <laughs> I <can't... laughs> Rob, I like that look better. Uh, what... <laughs> You look like a I don't you look like a murderer. Oh man, you guys Actually, you just look like, roast the hell out of me here. You look a little not like a murderer. You look a little bit like Bobo O'Bannon. I feel that's like exactly that. what I said. Yeah, you do. You have a, that's a Bobo O'Bannon. Exactly. Like Bobo O'Bannon, shave a beard like that, and we'll, we'll have to compare the two. Oh man, <laughs> be on. easy on me, chat. Be easy. Come on, Bobo's the man, dude. <laughs> I'm just talking the beard. Yes, oh. Bobo is a man. He's well, awesome. I, dude, if you were as tough as Bobo O'Bannon, I'd be afraid to even be in this room with you. <laughs> All right. So uh, now that we got the beard taken care of, and, and you're Italian, you know. Right, yep. there's some Italian in you. Mm -hmm. So that beard will be back if you're like me in like three days, two days. Yeah, give it a week. Yeah, I know. We'll Let's be see good, what's right? next week. All right, Mayweather versus Jake Paul. It's finally here. We've talked about it. It's this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Interesting. They're doing it on a Sunday. I, I like yeah. I like fights better on a Saturday night or a Friday night. Sunday they do wrestling pay per views. I never liked that. I never did. Uh, but on a Sunday they're doing it, and we want to talk about some of the stuff happening. First of all, have you seen the rules? I mean. There's some rules that a lot of people are talking about, uh, and one main rule that I'm kind of annoyed about as well, but I have, I have a, a theory on it. Let's throw the rules up. We have them here on the screen. You can check them out. We'll go through them with you. <coughs> Rob, check out the rules. Yeah, man. So the rules are announced. No winners will be announced, which is very strange. Where's the wah-wah sound effect for exactly. that one? Exactly. So no judges, obviously, are going to be needed. At the referee's discretion on a stoppage um, for knockdowns. So knockdowns are a thing. I don't think there's a three uh, three knockdown rule for this. Maybe but the knockdowns. Florida judges. They don't <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> Thank you to my man, Paulie. <laughs> pa Paulie's talking about the Florida judges. He's all amped up about it. Yeah, it's going to be three minute rounds, 12 ounce gloves, no headgear. Um, one of the more controversial things uh, that you know I've read on is the weight limit for Logan Paul, 190 pounds. If if get this, if he goes over one pound, each pound over is a hundred k fine. See, 100K fine to me and you is huge. To him, it's like a penny. And I, I, I feel like, a, that's, but that's like, but that's like fight lead up pre hype. I'm mm -hmm. always about business and how they're hyping stuff. That's how I think of things. So, like, you remember when the situation from Jersey Shore trademarked his abs or whatever and it got all this news coverage? Mm -hmm. Well, if you say something like that, everybody's going to cover that. What a great piece of news coverage. And I mean, it's still. We're talking about it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And everybody listens. We're, we're number one here. Mm -hmm. They're probably talking about it in the chat, too. But the other thing is, you look at no judges. That's less payment for people. They don't have to they can put more money in their pocket. And I have this theory, maybe I'm wrong, mm -hmm. that they don't want a winner announced because that way on social media, more people will debate who the winner was, or maybe not debate, they'll talk about it. And then maybe, maybe, I'm not saying it's set up, 
But if there's some kind of uh, inner workings of it, mm-hmm. well, now we have a we have a rematch for a lot of money that people are going to want to see to, with a winner that next time. That's what I think. I could be wrong. Yeah, and Mayweather's looking to tip the scales at 160 pounds mm-hmm. at 44 years old. He's getting 44. Older. Is there a chance for Logan Paul to beat Mayweather? Let me ask you a question. Uh, would you want to fight a 44 year old uh, Floyd Mayweather? No. No, but we're not we're not trained Absolutely like Jake not. Paul's training either. But if I did, I'd have one game plan. Try to knock him out in the first or second round. And I think that's what Conor McGregor attempted to do. Yeah. And if Logan Paul uh, has any chance to really, you know, win this fight, uh, I think the only the only true winner is going to be someone that gets knocked out or, you know, loser winner. You know what I mean? The only so, true winner is going to be them at the end of the night putting a purse in both oh, of their yeah, pockets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Evan, who is a, a content director, was talking about this. Mm-hmm. Evan, uh, I know if you want to come on and kind of dish on it a little bit about how he's getting older. And you were saying the same thing that concerned you a little bit. I mean, where I was at with the whole thing, I, exactly what Rob said. If you look at, you know, when Connor fought, um, he just came out swinging immediately because, you know, Floyd likes to sort of analyze his opponents, you know, in, in the early rounds, and then he and then he amps things up as things go on. So I think with um, what's his name? It's which Paul brother is it? Jake. You can never keep track anymore. With I think Paul no, Jake's. It's Logan. Isn't no, it? Logan's fighting. It's Logan. Logan. It, say? it says Jake on my format here. Tisk, tisk. That's what I read. <laughs> no, I'm a monkey. We're, I read what you give me. We're BKFC, baby. But <laughs> I think, you know, with uh, with Logan, he's, you know, got, what, 30 pounds on him. Mm-hmm. If he just, you know, he's got a puncher's chance, maybe. I mean, Floyd's getting a little bit older. I mean, I think Floyd's going to win. I really, so do I. I really don't see um, Logan winning this. But if somehow he could win, I think it's, it's in the early round. He lands some crazy... You know, looping right hand or something. Big, right. big Ben on. in the chat. Big shout out to Big What's Ben. The only ben. losers here are the people who actually pay for this <laughs> fight. Uh, well, tis tis to Evan too. I mean, there is mm-hmm. no winner. We just talked about that. There yeah. can't be. A, God forbid, there's a winner for something we pay for. Yeah. Well, I mean, if somebody gets knocked out, yeah. is, isn't that a winner? I mean, it's an exhibition. Well, they're not going to say it, but that's yeah, it's true. This so, is an exhibition. That's right. That's right. <laughs> one time, one supposed time, to be an exhibition. So when I was younger, one time I watched Butterbean fight in Philadelphia at the Spectrum, and I was the ring announcer for this. And uh, really, yeah, nobody told me. I was very young. It was very cool. Nobody told it me it was cool. an exhibition. So I went up there. Oh, in the hold fight. on, Brian. He fought Jamie Campbell. I well, I remember that. That was BKFC the fight. KFC fighter. I think. Oh, it was Jamie Campbell. That's right. Wow. He was a KFC fighter, but it was at the Philadelphia Spectrum. Mm-hmm. And uh, the promoter at the time, the dirty man that he was, didn't tell me that it was an exhibition. So <laughs> I went up there and I announced the winner. As he told me, go announce a winner. Go, and I thought Butterbean was going to kill me. Well, rightfully so, but I was an innocent victim. I'm always the innocent victim here. I don't understand. <laughs> anyway, let's talk more about uh, the big fight with Jake Paul. Excuse me, Logan Paul and uh, Mayweather coming up. The undercard. BKFC fighter on the undercard. And who is that going to be? Brian Maxwell. That's right. Fighting Chad Ochocinco. Yeah. Real fight? I don't know. <laughs> what this Brian when it's done. I would look at his face, see how he looks. Yeah. I mean, look. Uh, he's a BKFC fighter. He's a Muay Thai fighter. He's a professional boxer. Been around for a while. He's a real man. Yeah, you know, he's a real fighter. He dropped a little weight, I think, too, uh, mm-hmm. from the last time I saw him. He was actually at the last show, just kind of hanging around. We were talking. So, congratulations to him. We're very excited to see uh, how that goes, and, and what a good opportunity to be on a big stage because you know a lot of people are going to be watching. Yep, I got my money on Maxwell all day. Money easy, on Maxwell. Easy baby. money. Can I say right. something? What do you got, Evan? Well, while we're on the um, topic of the uh, the Paul brothers, I know the the chat loves hearing about them, but um, the other one is fighting Tyron Woodley. I saw that. I did see that. that. You want to talk about is that? Is that, that? Nah, confirmed? I don't, I don't care about that format. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go off the script. You don't care? They, yeah, they get enough. Unless the chat, unless the chat wants us to talk talk about it, man. I, I think we have much more important bare knuckle news and yeah, other. We, well, <laughs> that's right. The chat's excited. They're going with Rob. Evan, I see what you're saying. I'm sure we'll get into that in in the weeks coming up, but. I mean, we have no, so that's much a, that, that, that is an exciting fight for sure. I, you know, I am going to tune for Rob's that, excited. He's on yeah. the edge of his seat. I can tell. Uh, how about something that's getting people very excited? I mean, I'm excited about this. We talked about the top of the show, game bread, bare knuckle MMA, BK MMA. I mean, uh, it, it's very exciting. It's, it's headed by Jorge Mastival. Ma- mm-hmm. Ma- I can never speak. Street well, Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the game man. bread. Yep. So that's bare knuckle MMA. Like I, I feel like this is very exciting. I, Look, MMA is MMA, but bare knuckle is going to take it to a whole other level. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm excited to see what's going to happen, but it's going to be on the BK TV app. I'm pumped about that. Now we can all watch it. Yeah, I, I'm really interested to watch this to see how it um, to see how it rolls out. So some of the MMA rules that people are accustomed to, um, you know, with jujitsu and, you know, people are mad about the gloves. You, you can't grab hands. It's easier if they didn't have gloves. Um, so it would be interesting to see how the sport evolves from here. And 
And uh, that card is shaping up to be really, really exciting. I mean, you can see, uh, we put it up there a minute ago, Jason Knight versus Felony Charles Bennett, or his, you know, his other name, we can't call him, but he's yep. he's going to be on there. And he had a showing that blew our minds uh, last BKFC show. So now he's doing bare knuckle MMA. He's going to feel at home. Jason Knight uh, is an incredible, tough guy. We've seen him fight for bare knuckle before. So BK MMA is going to be very excited exclusively on the BKTV app, uh, bkfc.com. You're not going to get it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. so You're watching really cool. on the BKTV app. And I know we have another uh, bout, from what I understand, signed for that too. I think we can throw that up there too. It uh, looks like on the undercard, a guy that lost to Joe Riggs at BKFC 3, Brock Weaver, uh, he's fighting in the circle MMA cage. It's going to be a circular MMA cage. Yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's Game Bread's promotion. We're just airing it on the BKTV app and... We're looking forward to it. Really excited. Yeah, well, huge to be a mm -hmm. part of that. Huge to be, I don't know what you would call it, uh, some type of, I don't know if it's a partnership or what, but to be involved with it, uh, I think that's going to do nothing but good stuff for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship as well. I think it does, you know, great things for the fans. Everybody you know, wins. our goal at the end of the day is to try to provide the best and the most possible content for everybody. Get your money's worth. It's th three bucks, four bucks online right now. Right. I mean... Not not the tiger life, but you know, I was drinking a uh, rock star yesterday. I'm like, this friggin' rock star costs more than a month of PK TV. Think about it. that. Yeah. Think about that. And what you're getting, what these guys are putting on the line, and we yeah. keep on adding more content. And guess what? I'm telling you, I kind of know a little bit. There's more to come. There's always mm -hmm. going to be more with the app. So BKFC.com. Uh, this is something near and dear to my heart. I want to get into Rob. Wrestling. You can tell. Like, <laughs> Some I, people call it wrestling. You're down south in the in the <laughs> 70s, or maybe still now. Um, Somebody wrote on the format here, WWE on the way down. Now, whoever wrote that, that can't be further from the truth. However, they're, they're making a lot of interesting uh, decisions. And there's some articles you may have seen mm -hmm. about this where some of these fighters, we're saying we have our doors open to you. We, excuse me, some of these wrestlers, we'd love you to fight for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship. I know Lars Sullivan left a while ago. He wants to do well, Bare WWE Knuckle. just released, released like, what, 10, 10 well, prominent people not only that, that were they've groomed been, to be champions or are been champions? Released, not all prominent, but they've okay. been releasing people over and over and over again. But there's uh, something, there's a couple questionable people. Couple, yeah, yeah. There's Braun Strowman, who was, that's probably the number one guy released, who they've been pushing. Please come to throat. BKFC. Yeah. Please, please come to BKFC. <laughs> Braun Strowman. I would love to have that dude, man. I mean, that's, he, that's Braun up top. If we scroll up, you can see Braun at the top of the article. If you don't know Braun, Braun Strowman. He's been pushed down our throats, WWE, to be a main event guy, just mm -hmm. main evented. They really was on the way up, and they cut him out of nowhere. Same happened with a guy named Aleister Black. He was mm -hmm. really on the way up. So my question was, not to get too wrestling nerdy, but mm -hmm. you're not creating new stars. You're starting to, and then you cut them. Why would you do that? Well, then I thought, they're going to sell. I've been saying for over a decade they're going to sell to Disney or something. I see it coming. It's going to happen. And you know what, WWE? Go ahead and sell because we have AEW as well. And on top of that, we'll take all of your wrestlers that you throw out and we'll put them in bare knuckle fighting championship. I'd love to see Braun Strowman. What's he like? Seven foot? Braun Strowman, 6'8, yeah. 385 pounds. And he lost he a lot of He would be weight. by far the biggest heavyweight. And that's that dude is no joke. Power wise, man, you he get was, punched. He's a former bodybuilder too. So really good shape. Knows how to. He got Fingers kinda, crossed, man. <laughs> I know. He got kind of fat and then he lost a bunch of weight. He was depressed for a little while, but now he's motivated. So. We'll see if he's motivated to come to BKFC, yeah. but I was excited. I didn't even know that. I, I woke up and like, BKFC wants WWE guys. Cool, I'll take that. I'll take that. So they've released a ton. We don't know why. We don't know what's going on. We just think that there's some kind of sale that may happen. That's mm. the rumor going on. But, um, you know, that's what it is. Why release some top guys? They got rid of Lana, who was a very uh, attractive woman. Yep, uh, yep. And they she got was rid a draw the, for sure. Yeah, they got rid of some of the women, too. We'll take the, you know, we, we have a huge women's roster. We're going to talk more about that later. We have Pearl Gonzalez coming on today. Yeah, there you so, go. So, We'd take you the women, too, from B, from WWE if you could. Uh, bring them over our way, please. <laughs> That's how I feel. I mean, let's be honest. Now, uh, let's move on from WWE. Let's talk about Bare Knuckle again, further into Bare Knuckle. This is pretty big. BKFC 18 fight announcements. We have the full card. We're going to run down some of the top, top matches Biggest for card to Huge. date. 14 Huge. fights. Four at title least, matches. At least three, maybe four prelims we're going to be showing, depending on how you know time allotments. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the issues that when we go live on uh, the main card, um, why we don't show more preliminary fights, now we're starting early as well. So prelims are going to start at 7.30 p.m. for free on the BK TV app and the YouTube channel right here. So make sure you subscribe. Yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button. But a lot of great fights. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm going to start with on my format here. I mean, this is one that jumps out to me. Uh, Evan was talking about this as well before the show. Uh, Jared Grant taking on Travis mm -hmm. Thompson, 137 pounds. And Jared Grant is just this guy. I think he's the youngest fighter we have. He debuted in bare knuckle. He's been on a win streak. Undefeated. Tra yeah, right. Travis Thompson 
he's a tough dude. He just animal, loves man. to fight. The he's animal a savage, loves dude. To, some guys just want to do it for money. Mm-hmm. He likes to fight. I feel like he wouldn't do it for free, but I feel like he mm-hmm. would. He enjoys it. And he's had, uh, I've seen some run-ins with Jared and uh, the animal as well. I've seen them on different um, uh, media outlets covering, mm-hmm. maybe they talk about him. I've heard Travis talk behind the scenes about Jared Green. He's wanted this fight, and Jared's ready for it too. I talked to Jared the other day, I can tell. So it's going to be interesting to see if uh, who gets pieced up in this one. Yep, absolutely. And Jared Kid Gotti. Returning is Francisco Ritchie, opponent to be determined. Uh, that's going to be exciting. You know, he's an exciting fighter to watch. We're excited to see him come back. I actually mm-hmm. spoke with Francisco about uh, what happened to him, how he was in a coma for a little while. Mm-hmm. We spoke about it, and he's ready to come back, and he's he's jonesing to come back. He can't wait. And I should say the coma was not because of getting hit in the head or anything like that, and he mm-hmm. explained all that when I spoke to him. So we're excited to have uh, Francisco come back. Uh, also, another fight I'm excited about, man, let me bang, bro. Let me bang, Julian, Julian Lane. Lane and Jake Boswick. That's gonna be Shoo. a great fight. That's, <laughs> That's fireworks, fight. man. That's main event, co-main event, written all over it, right there. Yeah, and, and think about that. That's like the what? five fights five down, fights six down, fights down, six something fights down. like that. And then, as we said, Pearl Gonzalez, who's going to come on with later, mm-hmm. she's taking on Charissa Sagala, who fought uh, Starling. Um, um, I'm sorry, my mind's not Taylor right. Starling Thank at Knuckle Mania. I was thinking yeah. about Jade Starling. <laughs> Never catch me, I'm falling. Get to that old singer. Every time I th- hit her. Where is John Schaefer at, man? I know, man. I always think of Jade Starling. Freestyle music was huge in Philly. I don't know. Yeah. Actually in Miami, too. Yeah, it's it was, pretty yeah, it's, it's pretty big, so man. I always think Get some freestyle invasion down there. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So that's going to be a heck of a fight because mm-hmm. uh, we'll talk to Pearl about that later. And I- I'm excited what she's going to say about it. But she's a tough competitor, uh, as is Sagala. So that'll be good. Uh, other fights we're looking forward to. Of course, we have Tiago Alves taking on Yuli Diaz. Two Florida boys there. Going to go the at belt, it. the belt, man. The 175-pound belt is on the line for that one. And it's interesting, too. These two guys, it's, it seems very respectful, but you know they want at each other. You know yeah. it. So that's going to be a good fight. Uh, every, I mean, it's nonstop. I know I'm personally looking forward to everything, especially Luis Palomino, the baboon. Versus Tyler Goodjohn and what the heck is going Tyler Goodjohn? Bad, bad blood between those two. And man. Tyler That's wants that title. Tyler wants that title, and people are saying that, you know, they don't think Tyler's ready. I see that on social media. Other people saying, look at him, he's ready, he's training, let's go. I don't think Luis thinks he's ready, but Luis is coming ready. Oh, so, Luis is ready. That guy's prepped and ready to rock, man. I'm pumped for that fight. It's going to be great, and especially being in Luis's backyard. Mm-hmm. I feel like Tyler should bring security with like a riot squad or something. Yeah, he's going to need a body bo- a bodyguard. Ooh, yeah, he will. We're bodyguard, and you know who knows what's going to happen. And then you got Hector Lombard versus Joe Riggs, the co-main event. Now this match uh, for the cruiserweight title. Yep, 205 pounds. So we're guaran- we we have four title matches. And we're guaranteeing two champions crown because there's you know of course the, the Yuli match and uh, Tyler excuse me Yuli match and Tiago Alves and Hector Lombard versus Riggs two guaranteed titles crowned which is going to be awesome. Out of the eight cha- championship fight fighters that are on the top four roster, six out of the eight of the fighters are undefeated. That's ins- that's a good stat, yeah. Rob. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Wow. I just looked down and I and I counted it out real fast. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty good at that. <laughs> but I mean, that's that that's impressive, man. There's a whole lot of undefeated fighters going in for the belt. It's man, this is gonna be fireworks. I know. And you speak of the belt. Well, what about the big belt, the granddaddy of them all, the, the one world and only. heavyweight title, the mm-hmm. BKFC title? That's gonna be a good fight too. Sam Shoemaker, Joey Beltron. That's a toss up, man. Who I you got? Know. That's, you know, you're throwing you me on the got spot. It. I didn't ask you for anyone I, else. I, I was waiting. But it's, it's the heavyweight. It's the championship. It's the main event. Who's your money on? Chat, who's your money on? Uh, yeah, you tell, like Shoemaker? Let's do the you one You like and Beltron? Two thing. The one and two thing. All right, Shoe, all right, let's go. Beltron, let me see those ones in the chat. Shoemaker, let me see those two, uh, twos in the chat. Excuse me. We'd love to know. We, we value your feedback, and uh, I'm curious. I'm just curious to what you're going to pick. Look at me. I'm trying to kind of. Yeah, big shout out to D Enforcer. Big shout out to Joe Miggs. Jo- big shout out to Delphia. Brian Maurer, thank you all for joining us in the chat. I love it. Uh, I kind of try to fade that off me so I never have a decision. It's so hard. Sam Shoemaker, right? He's got such power. Mm -hmm. Hillbilly Hammer's there. Then you got Joey who can just eat punches but give him as well. Mm -hmm. I really, I can't, I don't know. The only reason that I think Sam has maybe a little bit of an edge, it depends how long the fight goes. If it ends early, Sam has a, a, if if Sam can put him away early, Sam's going to win. That's what I think. Uh, if it goes longer, Sam might have a harder time at winning. Uh, Joey's very tough. I rarely see people as tough. He'll eat those punches. So he will. The chat's I, calling. It's look. It's looking 50-50. One, I see ones and twos, see, man. It's, it's hard, a toss up. Man. So why don't mm-hmm. you do the tiebreaker then? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? You like how I did that, huh, Rob? Oh man! Look, he's not gonna do it. Who do you think? Come on, Rob. Who do I think yeah, is gonna yeah, win yeah, it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, man, I think the fans are going to be the winner on this one. You're buddy. such a scumbag. <laughs> You're such a scumbag. I'm not. I'm not calling that one, dude. I, I, I don't know how to call it. To be honest with you, I, I would not bet on that. That's something no. I would not bet on. Well, isn't it's it's great because sometimes when you watch these fights, or not with us, any fight, you can mm-hmm. say, "Oh, this guy's going to win." Oh, this. I feel like there's more than one fight. Almost every fight on the card, you can't pick who's going to be a winner. It's hard. It's it's a hard thing. Yeah, and we're actually watching right now. The chat's watching simultaneous. Sam Shoemaker fighting uh, Chase Sherman. I believe that was a draw, or uh, please correct me in the truck. Uh, I think that was a draw. But after this, it was. Sherman actually went on to the UFC after this. So he uh, he graduated, if you will, to a uh, different organization. And Sam is continuing his journey now. At the if you want to call it a graduation, I don't know what you would call it, depending, I guess, on the fighter and uh, stuff sure. like that. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he ended up going somewhere else. But, yeah, Sam's continuing his journey. And that's a question I have for Sam that I haven't been able to ask him yet. This guy started at BKFC 1. Okay, if you think about it, he started the tryouts, which I want to talk about in a minute. Mm-hmm. He started the Philadelphia tryouts. Sam shows up, breaks the punch meter. Everyone's like, this guy's great. Yep. Put him on BKFC 1. And now he's on a bunch of other BKFCs, has a great career with BKFC. And now he's going for the world heavyweight title. Can you imagine the drive? And the, That's the other thing. If they're even and it's 50-50, I know Joey has drive to keep the belt. He wants mm-hmm. to keep that title. I know that. I've spoken to Joey. He will die before he loses that, it sounds mm-hmm. like. But Sam's got drive, a build of, of you know, last three years. And by the way, it was a three-year anniversary, I think, yesterday. Yes, the first it was. Event. We turned three years old. And, and Sam, Sam has just climbed the rungs of the ladder the whole time. So I feel like Sam, he's not going to fall off the ladder when he gets up top. It's going to be very hard for him to lose. I mm-hmm. think mentally, he wants this so bad. Joey Beltran has a well-decorated MMA background sure. in UFC, mm-hmm. in various promotions. He has more fights than Sam Shoemaker. But like you said, Sam Shoemaker is... He's uh he's on the cusp of being the Cinderella man. But Sam Shoemaker's fights, uh, from what I can see, have been mainly bare knuckle. I think he had like mm-hmm. one boxing match outside of bare knuckle. Or something. Mm-hmm. I could be wrong, but I know yep. it's been mainly bare knuckle. Where Joey, all that we've seen it before, and we'll talk to Pearl Gonzalez about this. She had a bo- she was good at boxing. She was in the UFC. Is this going to transfer over to uh, BKFC? You know, all Sam has had is BKFC. But Joey's Joey's in that mindset too, big time. Joey's really in that mindset. So uh, let's let's talk more about our three-year anniversary so much stuff uh coming up we're going to talk about our three seniors coming on around i think uh let's see i just got a note here on my phone awesome. oh i didn't know he's here yeah today. he's going to be joining us apparently he has a big announcement he's coming well no he's coming on first to talk about our oh. three-year anniversary and then it says okay. he has a big announcement so this is huge so he should be joining us any moment but um, back n- not to circle back too too much back to the tryouts yeah so Let's talk about the trials. I had it in my notes. Oh, you did? See, I would have missed that. I, uh, let me tell you something, Rob. I've got it I in was, my notes somewhere. The reason, but I, I, the reason I brought up Sam's tryout mm-hmm. was because I was going to do a very professional broadcasting thing, and I was going to segue okay. into the trials, but I forgot, so you but did well, me. I mean, we, we just got an announcement on our phones. We just got an announcement in the and, headset of uh, some... Yeah, really huge. exciting, that really, really exciting news. Yeah, so we'll is, let we'll I, let Senior speak to that. We will, but mm-hmm. I want to say, as we get ready to have Senior on in a couple minutes with this huge announcement, this is huge for our organization. Uh, this is huge for our organization if David Feldman comes on, and this is something that I think is, uh, you could argue it's game-changing, too. It's sure. amazing. It's amazing. So I'm excited to talk about I'm so thrown off now. Wow, that was huge. <laughs> they yelled the announcement in our ear. All right, so let's talk about the tryouts now before we get into Dave Feldman coming on. Yeah, well, you spoke to Sam Schumacher. He came out. He had his tryouts in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And why it's important to come to the tryouts. Some of the biggest names in our organization, right? Sam Schumacher, 4-1-1. One, one. Yep. Reggie Barnett, six and one. Lorenzo Hunt, was a five and one. Arnold Adams, four and one. Some of the best records, some of the best fighters. We found them at tryouts, or they found they came to us. Yeah, they found us, then we yep. found them. And what does that tell you about tryouts? That tells you the guys that are coming to tryouts and the women too. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, they're, they they want to be here. It's not like they just oh well, you know I, I'm going to do boxing and MMA, and I'm also going to do bare knuckle. Some of these mm-hmm. guys come in. That's all they want to do. Mm-hmm. That's what they're focused on. That's what their love is. That's what's driving them. And that's a dangerous person, a dangerous individual when that kind of stuff happens uh, in, in squared circles. So we're glad to have you here. And with that. The next tryouts, if you want to get involved with them, and you definitely should. I don't this think this is has even brought up yet. This uh, is exciting. They're going to take place in New Mexico. Oh, it's right up there. Albuquerque, New Mexico tryouts, June 19th. You can register. You see at the bottom of the screen. And how about this? The seminar host, Leonard Garcia, the bad boy himself. Yeah. Guess where it's at. Do you know? Do you know where they're actually having the tryouts no, did at? they tell you? It's up there on the screen. Like Cowboy Cerrone's Ranch. No way. The one and only. That is that's that's awesome, huge. man. That's BMF, baby. Yep. Exactly. BMF that's phenomenal. Ranch. They're doing it at the BMF Ranch. Yeah, they are, man. Oh, wow. That's great. So you got Leonard Garcia. You get yep. to go to the BMF Ranch, and you get to do something you want to do and go to achieve your destiny. 
That's going to be amazing. And you get to be uh, Nate Shook. That's Nate Shook will be there as yes. well. That's right. You get to meet uh, Nate Shook. The, the living matchmaker. legend. That's right. He'll be there. And he went impress Nate, Nate, I mean, these great matches mm-hmm. kind of give him a lot of credit. Absolutely. Nate, yeah. Nate knows what we're looking for, and he's going to find it, these trouts. He has many times, uh, as, as well mean, as the rest his, of his. His. You know, his uh, skill set and his resume speaks for itself from all the names we just talked about. And there's more that he we signed them. You know, he finds them. He fi- he scouts this out. He's, he's doing a phenomenal job. So help him. Your your best bet of becoming a fighter. Show up to these tryouts. You know, show Nate what you can do. Show up and show out, man. Yeah. Show your stuff. And, and we like to hear your stories and stuff like that, too. It's always interesting. So, again, the tryouts are on the bottom of the screen. If you don't want to go or maybe, you know, a friend that wants to go. Make sure you forward that along. You can tweet it. You can put it on Instagram, whatever you want. Make sure you credit the BKFC show with mm-hmm. Sosha and Rob. Brian right. and Rob. I call myself by my own last name. <laughs> we have uh, David Feldman coming up in minutes for a huge announcement uh, and to go over the BKFC three-year anniversary. But before we do that, Rob, I say we toast our Tiger Life. I'm down for that. And listen to these messages, and we'll be right back after this. Tiger Life is not about race or religion, black or white, young or old, male or female. It's not about where you live or where you're from. It's about finding your why in life. Tiger Life is a way of life. It's a purpose, a light, the future. We all have a story to tell, so let's tell it. It's time to be heard. Just remember, we may not be able to rewrite our story, but we sure as hell could change the ending. Tiger Life. Energy never tastes it so good. Tiger Life is not about race or religion black or white, young or old, male or female. It's not about where you live or where you're from. It's about finding your why in life. Tiger Life is a way of life. It's a purpose, a light, the future. We all have a story to tell, so let's tell it. It's time to be heard. Just remember, we may not be able to rewrite our story, but we sure as hell could change the ending. Tiger Life. Energy never tastes it so good. Tiger Life is not about race or religion, black or white, young or old, male or female. It's not about where you live or where you're from. It's about finding your why in life. Tiger Life is a way of life. It's a purpose, a light, the future. We all have a story to tell, so let's tell it. It's time to be heard. Just remember, we may not be able to rewrite our story, but we sure as hell could change the ending. Tiger Life. Energy never tastes it so good. Tiger Life is not about race or religion, black or white, young or old, male or female. It's not about where you live or where you're from. It's about finding your why in life. Tiger Life is a way of life. It's a purpose, a light, the future. We all have a story to tell, so let's tell it. It's time to be heard. Just remember, we may not be able to rewrite our story, but we sure as hell could change the ending. Tiger Life. Energy never tastes it so good. Tiger Life is not about race or religion, black or white, young or old, male or female. It's not about where you live or where you're from. It's about finding your why in life. Tiger Life is a way of life. It's a purpose, a light, the future. We all have a story to tell, so let's tell it. It's time to be heard. Just remember, we may not be able to rewrite our story, but we sure as hell could change the ending. Tiger Life. Energy never tastes it so good. Tiger Life is not about race or religion, black or white, young or old, male or female. It's not about where you live or where you're from. It's about finding your why in life. Tiger Life is a way of life. It's a purpose, a light, the future. We all have a story to tell, so let's tell it. It's time to be heard. Just remember, we may not be able to rewrite our story, but we sure as hell could change the ending. Tiger Life. Energy never tastes it so good. And Tiger. we are back. Here he is, David Feldman, founder, president, BKFC. That's why we took that long break, because we had to get him all set up. He was eating his caviar as he walked in. He had to put his <laughs> shirt on. He was lifting weights. Alligator loafers. spectacular with us. <laughs> Getting uh, my pump on. Very excited to have you on the show, man, as always. Good to see you. And there's a lot of stuff we want to talk about. We were mentioning that yesterday was the three-year anniversary of the first BKFC. That's pretty cool to think three years ago. Look back on that. With man, it's crazy. Um, we talked about it all day yesterday. It was crazy, man. Three years ago, we went through a lot of the fights that happened on the first event. I, I, I watched Joey Beltran, Tony Lopez like three different times. Yeah. Just an unbelievable fight. Alma Garcia versus Beck Rawlings was crazy. So many, so many great fights. You, you know, it was 
the name of the event was Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship at the beginning. And it truly was the beginning of something great because here we are three years later, one of the most talked about sports organizations in the entire world. It's just an, an amazing place that we're in. It's been amazing growth. You know, we got a great team and we're continuing to grow. So, it's you know, it's it was really – it was it was a crazy day yesterday. Understanding that it was three years into this in, into this run, I look about fifteen years older. <laughs> but you know, one of those things. Well, I think it's interesting that three years into the run from when the fans uh, got to consume the first ever BKFC. But if you look back on your time uh, getting bare knuckle ready, it's much longer than that. How many years have you been at this, Dave? Would you say? Yeah, I mean, we first started this in uh, in two thousand nine, trying wow. to get this thing rolling. And then nine years later, we were able to uh, receive regulation and sanctioning to become the first ever legally regulated and sanctioned bare knuckle fighting event ever in the history of the United States. So a lot of people thought it was legal and regulated back in the 1800s when they were doing all the bare knuckle fights, but it was it's never been legal or regulated before. So it was the first time it was an amazing feat by, um, you know, the team really by myself going around. But 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 the legal team and all the support that we had for the um you know for the past nine years it's been crazy it's been crazy, incredible Brian. and it's led us to a lot of exciting things exciting announcements exciting things within the office just um little flash points i call them that happen as you grow and we have a very exciting thing today they said it in our ear and we've reacted we got thrown all off because this mm -hmm. is huge can, can you share what just happened yeah well it looks like that um on the uh, 2021 uh abc convention which is the association of boxing commissioners that they're going to I'm actually getting chills talking about it because I can't believe how much this is, you know, evolving. We got, we're going to form the, or they're going to form the first ever bare knuckle fighting committee with the Association of Boxing Commissioners, which is so huge for us with acceptance. Like it means that we're being accepted by the major um, boxing regulatory body in the entire state. I mean, in the entire country of the, of the United States. It's crazy, man. How does it feel in just three years to go from wow. barely, barely, getting to an event together, an event legalized, finally getting it legalized to now being world known, world accepted, world renowned. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's phenomenal. And, it, and you guys were listening in on the call yesterday. It looks like we just scored a, a huge, huge deal in Russia to do a monthly series over there. I mean, things are just exploding for us. You know, the growth is unbelievable. The fighters that we're getting to come over, we actually, on next week's podcast, I'm going to let you make an announcement and break the newest signing. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised at this one. It's a really, really uh, good fighter, uh, great history, fought some really, really um, big-time superstars. Mm. And um, the really cool, unique thing about that is, you know, a lot of people compare us to the trajectory of the UFC. Yeah. And um, this is a fighter that was actually still under contract with the UFC, had retired, and the UFC yesterday, for the first time in their history, gave a release to a fighter to fight for another organization. They wow. gave a release mm. for, for them to fight for us. So, you know, it says a lot about what we're doing and, and where we're going. And, you know, I guess the respect we're getting among the big players in the game. So so they gave a release to have this person fight for us. This is not available publicly yet, this this release. No one knows anything about this. Nah, um, we've got to dot the I's and cross the T's on the contract. Probably... I mean, because we're traveling, I'm going down to the uh, Floyd Mayweather fight because we have uh, Brian Maxwell is fighting yeah, Ocho Cinco. We're talking about that. So I'm going down there and watching that. So next week when we get back, we'll we'll tighten everything up on that and make the announcement on this show next wow. week. So there you go, guys. Little tease. Tune in nice. next week for the big announcement of the newest BKFC signing. I get excited for these things, like when he doesn't tell us. <laughs> it's and like Christmas every week. I do, I do. And you know what the fun <laughs> thing is? As soon as we get off the air, we're going to speculate like all week who it is, getting yeah. excited. So let's start that right now. What the hell? In the chat, speculate. Who do you think this is going to be that we're signing? I mean, we don't know. Let us know who you think. Interesting. And yeah. I, we don't need to call it out. I just want them a little discussion in the chat about yeah, who we they got think. Some names oh, we got some We actually have two really good announcements next week. Oh, Somebody else. Um, we're going to announce two, two signings. We're definitely going to announce two signings next Thursday. I'm sorry. I forgot one. And Rob's going to love this one when I tell him after the podcast. He's going to absolutely love this one. One of his favorite fighters of all time. <laughs> oh. oh, Rob, I, don't even know. I still don't know. <laughs> 
Okay. Now tell me after the podcast. All right, we'll tell you when we find no, out. No, no, I don't want to announce. You're not going to tell me. This. You're yeah, not going to yeah. tell me. I, I no, after, I, after. Yeah, yeah, I think I You're know. You're a jerk. You keep about. stuff to yourself. Stuff's on your format that I don't get. <laughs> What's up with this? But Santa comes. He drops some presents off. <laughs> <laughs> he does. I get the coal. So actually, we got we, we got a little press yesterday about talking about the WWE a little bit. Well, well speaking of some of those, it's uh, not coal. That's not coal for you, man. This is a wrestling thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about that a little earlier. The WWE thing. I saw some quotes you made. Basically, we have our arms open for the WWE talent that got released, uh, certain ones. They've released a lot of top name guys out of nowhere. I think they're going to, at some point, sell the company to a Disney or something like that. I think they're trying to clean up their finances more. Uh, they're making billions of dollars mm-hmm. from two different deals. So I don't know how bad they even need to clean up their finances. But I just thought it was interesting that you said, being an opportunist and being smart, hey, you want to fight Bare Knuckle? There's already been one guy that's been interested that came to us. No, absolutely. I mean, look, any anybody that's in the WWE, I'm not saying anyone in the WWE, but if you're in the WWE and you want to fight in combat sports and you have a background in combat sports, we're definitely open arm to talking to you because they're bringing that big following with them. Yeah. All it's going to do, and some other fighters might say, we don't want those guys in the organization, but guys, they're going to bring a lot of new fans to us. They're going to bring a lot of new fans to Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship that have never watched this before, and it's an opportunity for you to blow up your platform as well. So yeah. that's why we're doing things like this, and I, th- I think it's going to be amazing if, if if we're able to get one or two of those guys, and you know we're going to be in talks with them next week as well. So and, well, yeah, Dave, see what happens. The bottom line is, uh, for the fans that would feel that way about WWE, oh, we don't want these guys here or, or, or another fighter, I agree with what you said, but also everybody needs a chance. If they commit to it and they want to do Bare Knuckle, Give them a chance, and if they get pieced up, then they're probably not going to be here. So give I them mean, that chance. In a way, in a way, Brian. The only thing I'm going to say to that is, you know, you have to, yet, you, you have to have experience. I mean, you have to be a combat sport athlete, or is pro wrestling combat show, sports? No, not really. It's sports entertainment. I know, right? but you have to show something like like Bobby Lashley. He had he, he had a big time uh, wrestling background. Bellator. I mean, you got Brock Lesnar had a, was an NCAA wrestler. That kind of stuff. At least you. We know that you're extremely athletic and extremely competitive, and maybe then you can fare well. So you don't want to see a guy like Barry Horowitz come in. <laughs> the true wrestling fans will know what that is. Let's move on from wrestling, but I think I, I do think I'd like to see I want to see um, <laughs> who was the guy that said, ah, love you. <laughs> That's <laughs> Brother Love, man. Brother, brother Love. That's Mr. Man's right-hand man in real yeah. life. Ah, love you. You're taking me down a wrestling wormhole. Don't do this. I'm not. Don't I'm do not. This. I'm done. No. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> so it'll be exciting. And another thing is if you don't like the WWE guys, then come watch them get beat up if you think they're going to be. It might be fun for you. Uh, we have Pearl. We have Pearl on the phone. She's uh, gonna we come. We have on. her live. That's what I'm told. That's awesome. Are we gonna hit a commercial before this producers? You want to go right to her? All right, we're gonna go right to her. Let's no commercials. <laughs> Let's bring her on. Yeah, who, who wants to do a commercial? Right. Looking now? for big things from Pearl. Pearl, Gonzalez. there she is. Hi guys, how are you? Good. Good. How are you? I'm amazing. Thank you for asking. Oh man, well you're obviously there in the gym, so you must be in the middle of training. Thanks <laughs> for taking some time with us. I, uh, I am. I just finished my sprints real quick, and then I've got I've got my bag and and road work. The rest of my road work. To do. How how do you finish your sprints and not be at all out of breath? You must be in amazing shape. <laughs> and you did you put makeup on or something? Like you don't even look like you were sweating. <laughs> no, I'm drenched in sweat right now. Actually, uh, I just I had to you know I've been focusing on my breathing actually, and really, um, I use my sprint time as my meditation time. I, I envision the fight. I envision you know being under the pressure. The fight is pressure, whether it's a a crazy fight or not there's lights there's bright lights there's people watching there's cameras everywhere and so i um i like to work on my breathing actually during my sprint work so that's why i'm not out of breath right now that's amazing i, I have to talk to you because when i get done doing any kind of sprint work i'm usually on the ground sweaty and ugly and disgusting somehow you manage to look great <laughs> still good for you we're very excited i do about them every single too. day the only day i don't do sprints is saturday so i'm getting used to it here i dig it man so as i was saying i know rob's excited dave's excited to have you here too your fight coming up, it's going to be a great fight. And we're going to get that in a little bit against Shoriza Sagala. Um, but I want to talk to you first about your background because, you know, you, you did some UFC. You've had some great stuff going on in your life. But for the fans that don't know you yet or that are newer to our organization following us, I think you have an interesting backstory from what I can see. Um, it sounds like when you were younger, you had some problems with both of your parents and maybe alcohol issues or, dare I say, drug issues. And from what I can read, and maybe I'm wrong, that your dad kind of cleaned himself up and he got you into combat sports when you were about 11. Is that true? Yes. Yes. Both of my parents were um, drug addicts. Unfortunately, my entire family, I'm from Chicago. I'm from the hood. Uh, most of my family have been ridiculed with drugs or some sort of craziness. And uh, yeah, so my dad got clean before my mom did. He actually raised me as a single parent for most of my, um, from nine till about till 18 actually. 
And um, he worked many hours and did, and I was bad. I was really bad. I was a really mad, mad kid. I, I went through a lot of shit when I was a kid. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I can't swear on here, but went through a lot as a child and was pretty angry. And so um, I was already like, I was selling drugs at 11. Oof. I was gang banging at 11. I got my first tattoo at 11. Like uh, I've been through a lot and uh, he knew he, he didn't know all those things, but he knew I was getting into some shit. So he put me into combat sports at 11 and um, it was, it, at first I hated it. I hated it. I didn't like it. And the, the, my instructor made me do push-ups, and I was like, who is this dude? And before you knew it within six months, I, I absolutely loved it. And, and it was my outlet. It, combat sports became my, my escape to my reality. And also the way that I dealt with all the issues that I had going on in my personal life. Um, and I have, I've been a part of combat sports since I'm, I'm 34 now. Uh, I've been in this, in, in MMA and in combat sports, mixed martial arts, uh, this entire time. Um, i I'm predominantly a grappler. I come from a grappling background. I've always favored grappling, uh, and was just spent about six years in San Diego with uh, the 10th planet and, and, mm. and solely focused, you know, on, on MMA and grappling. And, uh, just recently, once I got the opportunity to, to work with Dave and bare knuckle, I, um, I thought about it for a couple of days. I packed my shit up and I moved across the country. I'm here living in Brooklyn, New York now, and I'm training with the pound for pound number two, best female boxer in the world, Amanda Serrano. Okay. This is, it's it's insane when I tell you I haven't won one sparring round here. I, I truly mean that. Like, it's so hard, but it is so incredible. It's such a blessing to be here. I, I don't know anybody here but the team. So I train and I'm in my apartment and, and I'm just focused 100 percent on bare knuckle right now. And I'm really excited to showcase my skills. We're excited to see you showcase skills. And you had said that you uh, your grappling was very strong mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But from what I could see, and again, you're back there in the boxing uh, discipline. But weren't you a Golden Gloves champion when you were younger, too, in boxing? Yes, I'm, I've competed in mixed martial arts my whole life. And so uh, young, very young, my I, I kind of had a coach that was ahead of the game in his time. I mean, this is before it was MMA. This was called and No Holds Barred, NHB yeah. at the time. And we competed in judo. We competed in jiu-jitsu. We competed in boxing, kickboxing. We competed in everything. He just threw us in tournaments, whatever was going on in the, the regional area. We went to Mexico, Canada. I mean, he just took us everywhere. And... Uh, so I had the opportunity to compete in, in the Golden Gloves in 2008. I won. I won Golden Gloves in Chicago. I competed was the runner up in the in the open division in 2009. Um, and I've actually had a couple of years where I focused solely on boxing uh, or where I was injured and I couldn't grapple. And so I've always loved boxing. It's a beautiful art. It's a dance to me. I love listening to salsa and just it, making it a dance. And so now I'm here. And as much as I thought I knew about boxing, I have absolutely no idea. And uh Jordan, my coach here, has basically took my infrastructure and tore it all down, and we are just building from the ground up, and I'm building my fundamentals right now and, and just owning these skills. As you, as you build, though, from the ground up, I mean, your coaches are aware, I'm sure you're aware, that boxing, as great as it is, as hard as it is, isn't the same as bare knuckle. We've mm -hmm. seen a lot of boxers come through. We've seen Olympic-level boxers come through here and almost lose. We've seen other mm -hmm. boxers, former uh, champion, retired in the corner. You know, we've seen this. You don't have the gloves to protect you as much. There's a lot of the dirty boxing is encouraged. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different things like that. Do you find mm -hmm. that you're training specially for bare knuckle, or are you still kind of doing the boxing stuff for now? Right now, I'm solely focused on building a boxing structure. And when I talk about structure, I mean my balance, my footwork, my stance, you know, making sure that I have balance when I'm throwing, making sure I have power underneath me when I'm throwing these punches. In MMA, yes, I've, I've gone to Thailand. I've trained in Muay Thai for months. I've gone and trained a lot of striking, but it's not the same as boxing. Now, I do. I am a grappler. I do have a great clinch. Actually, my clinch is one of the best parts of my game in my MMA striking. However... I really want to focus on owning the boxing and, and owning the fundamentals at this point. Um, and so, yes, I am very aware of the clinch. I'm very aware of the dirty boxing. I don't train with any wraps ever. If you guys see my hands, they're constantly battered, bruised, swollen. Um, I hit the bag every single day with no gloves to, to condition my hands. I hit wood. Like I, I'm, I'm doing everything necessary to prepare myself for this fight. Well, I'm sure you are. I mean, being the elite athlete you are, we're, we're glad to have you here with us. And I have to ask you, before you signed on with BKFC, I'd imagine you didn't just you didn't just sign blindly. You must have followed the product. I would imagine you're fighting um, Sharice Sagala coming up, BKFC. And, and here's the thing. When you fight her, you saw her match with Starling, right? At Knuckle Mania, yes. it was the opener. They just beat each other up pretty bad. When you see something like that, does that get you excited? Uh, what did you pick up from that fight? 
Oh my gosh, she's extremely tough. That was an incredible fight to watch that. It was so exciting start to finish. Those girls were just, they gave it their all. And it was inspiring. It was inspiring to see women in there and, and not afraid to, to batter them. They're both beautiful girls to go in there and, and just throw down, you know, and really give it their all and not give up. I mean, she got dropped in that fight. She got hurt. She never stopped coming forward. That was, that was, I have so much respect for my opponent and for both girls. Um, yeah, it excites me before, like I said, before I, I was in martial arts and where I come from, I'm from the hood. I've had, yes, I have MMA fights, but I also have like 20 street fights. I've been street fighting my whole life. I love fighting. <laughs> wow. Always have. So when I got the, uh, found out I had the opportunity, the first thing I thought is, oh yes, I get to go back to my hood days. Like I almost <laughs> want to take my earrings off before I get in this damn fight and be like, let's go. Cause it's, it, it, it reminds me of bringing out that savagery that, that I feel like I've, I've put away for so long to be professional, to be a professional athlete. And I feel like I get to own some of that and go in there with my hands and really use my hands. So, I mean, you're excited to be here. You've seen the past fights. You've seen your opponent. You have respect for the opponent. The female division's on fire. I mean, I'm sure you're already eyeing people up even before this fight. But when you come into this fight, I mean, why bare knuckle for you? You just said you're excited because it's like a street fight. But as you walk to the ring, uh, I've heard this from other fighters, will there, be, will there be nerves or will you be cool and confident? How are you as a fighter like that? You're facing kind of the unknown if you train for it. Oh, my gosh. You know, I thought about that. I thought about even those the girls watching – the fight that you just mentioned, Sharice and um, Tay Taylor, um, the face they make before you go in there, you know you're not coming out of this. Like for me, like I can go in here, I can finish this fight in a minute with my grappling. I'm not, that's not happening in this fight. So when I go in there, I'm going into war. And to me, that's so fucking exciting. I'm so excited to do that. I, I can't say I've ever had a big war like that, a striking war. And I'm excited to showcase my skills and, and years of hard work in there and just show that I am a warrior. I'm more than just, a pretty face because I am. Yeah. I mean, you, you have, uh, for my estimation, every asset you could, if, if you prove what a good bare knuckle fighter you are, you're, you're a beautiful woman, you're powerful, you're in there, you're working hard. And I would say that you not having any friends in Brooklyn's better off. Cause then you're just a machine that's training every day. There's no temptation, stuff like that. So we're excited to see you June 26th. Uh, you'll be fighting, of course, Cherie Sagala. You're seeing her fight. Uh, actually the fans are watching her fight on our live stream they're watching some of that fight now from knuckle mania mm -hmm. but you're going to be fighting her coming up june 26th bkfc 18 available at bkfc.com it's a jam-packed card and what a card to be on because this is what i see as our biggest card of all time so pearl i mean you're aware that you could come out in this card and anybody it can happen to anybody you could be the most talked about fight if you have a great fight that's definitely my game plan and, and goal to go in there is that i don't want to go in there and just fight i want to go in there and I'm, I'm coming in to showcase that i'm here in this division and I'm here to, to fight the best and to make a statement that I am one of the best in this division. And I'm sure you'll do that. We're looking forward to see you make that statement because the fans love watching people like you that are driven and fired up. Thank you for coming on with us today. Again, uh, June 26th, BKFC 18. You can see Pearl in her debut, bkfc.com on the app. You want uh, so to let her plug her, uh, her social channels? Sure. Thank God Dave's here. See, the president's <laughs> taking care of you. Plug your social channels. I was so excited to hear from you. What are they? Oh man, thank you, guys. Dave. I'm so excited to work for you and I fight for you. I'm I'm looking forward to to the thank 26th. You. So thank I you. Can, I can't wait to see you fight it. You know, I I hear a lot of a, a lot of big expectations about you, and I know you had other opportunities. So thank you for um, you know taking the gloves off, if you will. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in about three weeks. No oh, man, thank you. And guys, you can follow me at Pearl Gonzalez everywhere: uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and yeah, check me out. I'm fun. I'm fun to watch. You see, I'm sure you're fun to watch, and that's why you're a pro business, a pro fighter, and a businesswoman. Because I would have forgotten in two seconds to plug my social medias after I was talking to Dave. Thank you for that, Dave. And I also love that I have the president of the company sitting next to me who you could speak to, and I'm just interviewing you. And I'm not even letting you talk. Sorry. Any other questions, Dave? Seriously. No, I mean that's it. I'm I'm really just looking forward to. Mm -hmm. I heard a lot about Pearl from a lot of different people in the fight industry, and they said, you know, this is someone to grab onto. So we were able to come to an agreement, and here she is, three week, three, a little over three weeks away from her first bare knuckle fighting championship fight, and she didn't get like thrown in with some softies. She got thrown in with no. Teresa mm -hmm. Sagala, who fought one of the best fights ever in BKFC female history so far. So yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, we're looking you... forward to another barn burner with this oh, one, yeah. and yeah. can't wait to see what you're bringing, Pearl. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All Thank right. you so much, Pearl. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll talk to you really soon, okay? 
Yes, have a good day, gentlemen. You, you too, too man. Go run Thank some you. more sprints and don't look tired at all. You're amazing. <laughs> uh, it's Bye. true. She is. See you later. And, and I want to say, I offer this to you, Knuckle Mania. Go back and watch it on the BKFC app, bkfc.com. Watch Sagala's fight. If you think she was putting, if you don't know, you'll see what we mean. This is going to be a challenging fight. It's going to be great. It's not a pushover fight. It's really not. Not at all. And that was what? Fight of the night. That stole the... That stole. That started Knuckle Mania. That was the first we'll start. <laughs> Man, that the was fireworks. right. That was yes. the first fight on the, the main, main card, card for Knuckle Mania. That's crazy. I know. And my my jaw. I was watching on the monitor back. My jaw. It was a monitor sellout. We call it. All the production people were around the monitor, like yelling at the monitor while it was going on. It was incredible. Did yeah. you guys talk about July yet at all? We're going to talk about July okay. in just a you little guys bit. Go ahead. But first, we're going to go to this commercial, and we're going to come back. We're mm. going to come back with the knockout of the week, and one of these involves a BKFC fighter. I don't know what yours is. Mine does. Do you know? I don't. All right, let's find out right after this. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $3.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full archive of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $3.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at bktvapp.com. Let him see it. Let him see it. Three ninety nine. Are you out of your mind? What a value. Let him see it. Keep it up there longer. That's what I say. Rob had a great interview with Pearl. Yeah. Pearl was just on. She's going to be she's coming awesome. up to fight. Uh, she's incredible. And if you're unable to watch this or you're just tuning in, you can always check us out on Spotify. If you're driving in your car or something, it's all audio, but we're on there as well. Check that out on Spotify. But let's get to it. Let's get to. I'm going to do it this week. I haven't done it in like two weeks. I'm Jones uh, in here. here we let's go. get to the <laughs> knockout of the week. That was a lot of pop and circumstance that is, here. man. I'm all jazzed up in my tiger life here. <laughs> so some great knockouts of the week. Uh, let's see what we have here. So the first one is you, it looks like, Rob. Is it the, mine? The, I don't know. We'll see. Let's see what comes up. I think all it's right, you. So my, not, my knockout of the week is <laughs> AMC <laughs> Stock. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> For anyone on the ground level that got in early, congratulations. And we're able to cash out. So it wasn't Robin Hood this time exclusively. Previously in these stocks, these... Uh, these short betters and the Wall Street bet stocks, they're going through the roof. They paused trading yesterday when it hit, I think, like 60 some odd dollars a share. I mean, it, it went through the roof. I'm not going to lie. I bought 10 shares. I made like mm, 50 bucks and I was excited. That's so. what I was going to say. You, you seem like you're excited. You must have made some loot. I, I was did, wondering. Man. I made like 50 bucks. I'm Rob cool with that. showed up today at work in a limousine with a hot tub in it <laughs> and he was eating caviar and drinking uh, Don Perignon. I was wondering what was different with you. Yeah, just, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm by far not a financial uh, analyst or an. All, all the, the financial advice that I give, uh, take it with a grain of salt, <laughs> right. but buy BlackBerry. BlackBerry's <laughs> going to the moon. <laughs> we make some of our, our, our listeners and watchers here rich, I our viewers. I actually miss BlackBerries, though, man. With the, uh, Crackberry. He's called yeah. Crackberry because you're addicted to it. Actually, yep. my son, we gave him an old phone we found that flips open. He's like, this is my phone. It's a BlackBerry. I'm like, dude, you, that's like, that's like the, remember the Zach Morris phone, the real big one? Yes, and yes. And before that, they had the bag phones, which Dave said he had. <laughs> the when cord? Was oh, yep. Lord. We've come a long way. Yeah, man. So what's your knockout of the week? All right. So my knockout of the week involves, I'm going to set this up, the hero himself, Quentin Henry. Uh, Quentin Henry out playing with his son, and they're having a okay. good time, and he's filming it on the swing, and his son actually knocks him out. Let's watch it. We have a slow-mo of it. <laughs> <laughs> the dog was there, too. I saw the dog. And now, I don't know how much this they're going to show, but he's on the ground. And here's what they're showing. Quentin. Quentin's like, what happened? And then, and then, and then, when they come back, I'm going to be quiet because if you can hear it, the kid's laughing like maniacally. Is that the word? Oh, there's no audio. When they come back, this kid is laughing. That's <laughs> great. Yo, we should sign him up for BKFC, we man. We got Quentin a new Henry's fighter, son. man. <laughs> Shout out. I think Quentin's going to be okay, though. Yeah. I think he's going to be okay. 
Can you imagine the power if you're a kid knocking Quentin Henry out? Did your well, father? It, yeah, well, I could see where it's coming from. If it's Quentin Henry's son, I, I, I could see why, man. That <laughs> he dude's read some right. Yeah, that he dude's right. legit. Look at him. I love, I love when he goes, the phone goes flying, and then when he goes down, you can kind of see Quentin's face. <laughs> so shout out to Quentin Henry. I don't have his, you saw his social media mm -hmm. up there, Instagram. You can follow him. He puts all kinds of good videos and stuff up. Uh, and I, I don't think we have anything from the fans this week. I, I, I am think so sad that the fans did not provide us a video this week. But the reason we're not doing the fans this week, I don't know if they provided it yet, but Evan was like, you got to show this one. Oh. I have one. So let's do Evan, okay. the Lord Evan Zentar's Knockout of the Week. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's called Ball Punch. What <laughs> is this? Is this from one of those weird sites that you visit, Evan? Oh. Actually, that was actually on LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Who are you connecting with? <laughs> yeah, where are you getting these videos, man? I got all these maniacs. There you, there you have oh, it. Look. Oh, look. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. You know what that reminds me of? Do you remember, was it Ace Ventura where he punches the guy like, boom, 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 like oh, speed yeah. bag on the balls? That's what it reminds me of. Ace Ventura, mm -hmm. Ace Ventura. All righty then, Evan. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I can feel them shrinking up in my stomach now. That yeah, my, like, that, my that, stomach hurts really bad. I don't think anybody other than a woman having a child would know the pain if you're not a man to get mm -hmm. kicked or punched there. Is that fair to say, everybody? Is that fair? Seriously. Very fair. Very Evan, fair. what do you think? What'd you ask? I said, you got to pay attention, Evan. Come on, man. You're in there. What are you doing in there? <laughs> I was taking a sip of Tiger Life. You're just running the show, taking a sip of Tiger Life. Yeah. I said, do you think it's fair to say, is there any other pain that's worse in the world for a male, I mean, female childbirth, mm -hmm. obviously? Uh -huh. Than getting hit in the balls. Yeah, when AMC goes from 70 to 50 in a matter of two minutes. That's My right. man. That's right. That's right. Let's go. Evan, that's Evan. AMC to the moon, Blackberry <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> Look at Evan, man. He's all, he's witty. He's up. He's up for it. We're there. He's half paying attention. He's wittier than we are. All right. So they were great knockouts. Evan, thank you for that. I think. Uh, a You're lot, <laughs> yeah, right. A lot more to get to here mm -hmm. be before we call it a day. I mean, there's some exciting news I want to talk about here. We have a BKFC 19 fight announcement. We teased this a little bit earlier, but then we, we found out there's actually two announcements. I'm going to do the first one, and you can do the one we just found out a minute ago. Okay, Rob? Okay, you got right. it. So the first one we have, uh, you know them both, and there's an interesting story here very well. Britton Hart versus Jenny Savage. There's some bad blood there. I'm a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you got to play that. Thank you, Evan. Or whoever, I believe that was Evan. But there you go. Britton Hart versus Jenny Savage. It's going to be a good fight. Uh, July 23rd. BK also, all right, so. Hold on, I want to say something about this really quick. Can mm -hmm. I? This fight is interesting to me, and I was in the middle of it when Britton Hart won uh, against Taylor, Taylor, I'm going to say Taylor Starling. Wow. Paige. Paige Van Zandt. Mm -hmm. uh, won against Paige Van Zandt. I was in the ring in the squared circle as she made the famous comment that, where she said this. Yep. Happy fucking this. feeling. When she made that comment, uh, all of a sudden I see somebody dive in the squared circle. Oh, and, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, and I'm like, who is this? And it took me a second, and they're holding her back. Jenny Savage was like elevated. She was like jumping over people, and people were, it was like she was crowd surfing. They were pushing her out of the ring. And you know, I think Britain, I don't want to speak for her, but mm -hmm. I would imagine she was unhappy. This is her moment, her biggest moment of her career she trained for. And mm -hmm. here comes Jenny in the squared circle. And I can tell you this, anybody that thinks that was set up, that was not set up because after that, we put extra security around it's one the ring. thing, and it's like kind it of is. apparent, and it's like this. So I saw that. So I knew it kind of was just a matter of fact of like, if you guys watch the documentary, you should really watch it. Because BKFC puts a lot of effort into this, and I was not gonna let Paige Van Sant outwork me. You cannot outwork me. Yeah, I'm not the most technical boxer. Nobody can outwork you. Congratulations. What's going on here? Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Trash, trash. That girl doesn't have a name, and I'm not gonna call her out. But you will never be in this level with me. There's levels to this shit. And it's not getting in and taking someone else's shine. Wow. That's called garbage. Garbage tries to take people's shine. Wow. Wow. Well, I don't well, know congratulations. how. Congratulations. What a fight. What a moment for you. Britain 4.0 heart. I'd say this is a pretty good version of you, Britain. Congratulations. David Feldman here with a big congratulations as well. There you go. She got water all over me. She got, ever, ever got was, drenched in I that. got the brunt of that. It was horrible. Evan Big got shout out to I you for keeping it too. together and keeping it professional in the ring. Who, me? Though, man. Yeah, oh, absolutely. yeah, I was all wet and stuff afterwards. I didn't care. It's fine. I, I, I like getting the story. It's, mm -hmm. it's a big deal to me. But I got to tell you, I was in the squared circle, and I just described mm -hmm. that differently. It, it, they call it like the Medea effect or something. The Mandia, whatever. So there's some name. You can look it up. Okay. I remember that differently. I remember a bunch of people. Mandela, thank you. <laughs> a Mandela effect. Uh, I remember people kind of carrying her out of the ring. I didn't realize how quick they got her out like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that was kind of – that was more intense than I even remember it because – 
you know, you can tell Britain's pretty pissed. Did you see the one girl in the Britain Hart shirt gave the finger mm-hmm. when she got out of the ring? Like, Jenny Savage isn't here to make friends, it doesn't sound like. She's here to make money and win fights. I think Britain Hart's here to do that too, but Britain Hart maybe wants to be a little more professional. Will this fight be professional? You would think, but there's a lot of bad blood. The, a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of bad blood in that for sure. Well, and we're I excited know, about and that. And I know fight. from from security standpoint and managerial Tighten standpoint, up. a lot of heads rolled after that. And I know the president wasn't wasn't happy at all that you know she was able to get into the ring. Since then, security has been like tripled up. I know. So that does. I can barely get in the ring, do my post yeah. fights. Like, are you? I'm like, don't you watch the show? Let me out there. Yeah. I'm gonna do my, yeah. It's one. Know? It's one thing to call people out, and it's another thing to you know, uh, as Britton Hart said, she just went five rounds. One basically an impossible fight that everyone uh, basically uh, said uh, you have no chance of winning. Yeah, you, you can't win, and to hop in and you know do that, it's disrespectful. Yeah, I mean it, the chat can weigh in on that. Is it disrespectful? I mean, did you enjoy that? I'm mm-hmm. not gonna lie. I, now looking back, I'm like, oh, now I really want to see this yeah, fight. But it yeah, wasn't. It yeah, wasn't one of these drama setups. to it, man. But it's. Uh, I think she crossed the line. I do too. I think she crossed. the I line. I do too. Let us know what you think in the chat. And let us know. We'll do the one or two mm-hmm. thing again. Who's going to take that fight? Britton Hart or Jenny Savage? Let us know by hitting one or two in the chat. We'd love to hear from you. But as we talk about that, as you're hitting one and two, mm-hmm. we have another big fight. We just found out about that one announced. I have a tiger like burp coming, so you do. Taylor this Starling. <laughs> Sorry. <We're- laughs> we got that on air. That Taylor Starling <laughs> is going to be on the card. No Taylor Starling versus Casey Robb, if I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. Casey Rob Cassie, excuse me. Taylor Starling versus Cassie yeah. Rob. Cassie. Yeah. Wow. BKFC nineteen. Paige Van Zandt, Rachel Ostovich, Taylor Starling. It's female heavy. Wow. And dude, they're all this great is, fights. This is gonna be nuts, man. <laughs> not only not only that fight, uh, those fights I should say, but it, who wins those fights mm-hmm. you want to see because that's gonna kinda help shape the women's division. So that's exciting too. There's gonna be a lot of great fights. As we do, every card stacked. gets better. <laughs> yeah. It's true. It's so true. Uh, but we're both both very excited. The organization is excited for those fights. Uh, and, you know, July 23rd, uh, I believe it's in Tampa, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to be great. I'm pumped up about that. So um, other than that, I mean, I think we had a hell of a show today. We had bombs dropped on us that we didn't even know were coming. Absolutely. It threw me off the broadcast professional journalist that I am, and you are as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have a clean-shaven face now. You look very pretty. I know. You well, I don't know if the chat knows it or not, but um, I'm going to challenge you right now. To a rock paper scissor off Me? best of one. Yep. What's the what are we gonna What's the stakes here? You'll know when you're done. Ready? I don't like on this. On three, on three. Shoot. Put, put them up. Put them oh, up. Come put on, we're up, gonna go this scumbag. way. Bag. Put them up. Put them All up right. so they can see. One, one. Oh, hold up. Good. One, two, three. Shoot. You guys saw that, right? <laughs> That's that's he bullshit. He beat me. I was joking. He, he beat me. He beat me. I put a rock. I was joking around. He beat me. All right, we're gonna cover find, it up. We're, we're cover gonna my fi- rock. We're gonna find out next week uh, what Brian has to do. Oh, I'm gonna find losing. out next week too. <laughs> I'm gonna find out next week too. <laughs> yep, everyone's gonna find out. You guys are dirt bags. That's all. <laughs> all when right. they ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel right now. I don't know. <laughs> I did, I feel good, though, because we had a great show. I had a lot of mm-hmm. fun. And, you know, my thing, as long as the cameras are rolling, I'll do pretty much anything to entertain you. But keep in mind, we have a show coming up, so you can't beat me up too bad. <laughs> All right. Now they're good. just getting sound effect happy. I All know. right, let's, let's hit another sound effect. Let's hit our closeout music. Usually they're playing me off here. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Rob, for another Thank good you, day, man. man. Appreciate great it. Great show. Thank you to the fans I want to kiss your in. face so bad. <laughs> Look at that shaven face. All right, put them up. Tiger Life Toast to end the show. Thank you for being here. Make sure you hit us up on Spotify. Make sure you follow all the socials. And don't forget BKFC coming up. BKFC.com. You can get that app for June 26th. Get in now. It's cheap. Get in. Cheaper than a cup of coffee. But I have Tiger Life. Bye, Evan. See ya. (laughs) Knuckle up, baby.